Naughty Dog's 2013 release The Last of Us is considered to be one of the best video games ever made. While every aspect of it is of very high quality, like the ridiculously beautiful soundtrack, especially the narrative as well as the performances of Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson stand out the most and are the biggest reason for its critical acclaim. For those of you who don't already know, the game takes place during a zombie apocalypse and focuses around a man called Joel Miller. He tragically lost his 12-year-old daughter in the beginning of the outbreak due to a soldier who was advised to shoot them. However, Joel survived and we get to play as him 20 years after this incident. He's a smuggler now who tries his best to survive in this new post-apocalyptic world. Nevertheless, he's still a broken man. One day, he and his partner Tess are offered a well-paid job to smuggle a 14-year-old girl called Ellie to the other side of the country because she's the only known person to be immune against the virus that causes the infected to turn into zombies. And they should bring it to the so-called fireflies so that they can make a vaccine. After Tess was bitten by a zombie and therefore died, only Joel and Ellie are left. Throughout the journey, they go through a lot of beautiful as well as horrible moments and create a sort of father-daughter relationship, which is demonstrated in many scenes. There are some subtle ones, like Joel looking at the watch his daughter gave him for his birthday when looking at Ellie, or when Ellie is almost killed by cannibalistic pedophiles and Joel calls her oh, baby girl. after finding her exactly the way he did to his real daughter. Oh, baby girl. And there are some not so subtle ones, like Joel literally sacrificing the entire human race for her, but we get to that in a moment. In the end of the game, when they arrive at the hospital where the fireflies are, it is revealed that in order to create a vaccine, they have to kill Ellie because they would have to operate on her brain, which she wouldn't survive. So it's either her or the entirety of mankind if you want so. Joel, who wouldn't be able to go through the pain of losing another daughter again, then is able to save her by killing a lot, and I really mean a lot, of fireflies, as well as their leader Marlene, who actually is also close to Ellie. However, she also wanted the operation to happen. There is no other choice here. Ellie, who is subconscious throughout this entire scene because of the drugs that were given to her before the surgery, has no clue about what happened in the hospital. After escaping, Joel then lies to her when she wakes up by telling her that the fireflies weren't able to make the vaccine, which really disappoints her because she was very excited to be of big help by creating the cure for the virus and help to save countless of lives. Ellie, despite her naivety, still feels that there's something off with the story. So in the last scene of the first game, she confronts him and says, Swear to me that everything that you said about the fireflies is true. Joel answers with, I swear. To which Ellie replies, Okay. And then the credits start rolling. Their relationship starts off with them actually being annoyed by each other. Oh, because it's gonna be a little... <laughs> and Joel initially only saw her as cargo. However, in the end, you can say, he sacrifices the entire human race for her to survive. The story addresses many topics that we can learn from, especially when looking at the main protagonist. So, kings and queens, let's get started. Why don't you say whatever speech you got rehearsed? Get this over with. Okay, let's go. Number one, family. One major factor of the story is the importance of family. In the beginning of the game, we get to know Joel as a man whose family is his number one priority. We see that he has a good relationship with his brother Tommy as well as with his daughter Sarah, which is also shown through a birthday card that she wrote him. Nevertheless, we also learn that he's almost never at home because he has to work a lot. He would do everything for her to have a good life. However, after losing Sarah and parting ways with Tommy, he's an emotional wreck even after 20 years. After being introduced to Ellie, he more and more starts to see how much she resembles Sarah. The game contains many scenes where we realize that he starts to actually care about Ellie and wants to protect her instead of only seeing her as cargo. Also, we as the player feel the exact same way because the game makes us experience this journey by playing as Joel and seeing it through his eyes, so to speak. So every time Ellie is in danger, the player also feels this real aggression towards the people that try to hurt her. As already mentioned, Joel even dooms mankind just to make sure she survives. When Joel tells his brother what happened in the hospital in the second game and Tommy asks him What do you do? He solely replies I saved her. No words about the amounts of fireflies he killed but only that he saved her, which was and still is his only goal. The game beautifully demonstrates the importance of family. It shows us that if everything is taken away from us, the only thing that matters are the people that are the closest to us. 20 years after the incident with Sarah, Joel actually lives a fairly good life considering the circumstances. However, he is still tortured by a death every day by for example reoccurring nightmares. Of course, these days in the western world, we aren't threatened by hunger, diseases and so on anymore. Not just that, but we even live in ridiculous excess and are more distracted than ever because of stupid TikTok for example or any other forms of useless time-wasting activities. 
Like Ellie says, when she finds a note somebody wrote before the outbreak. Is this really all they had to worry about? Boys? Movies? Deciding which shirt goes with which skirt? All of our stupid first world problems make us blind to what's really important. Just ask yourself if everything not necessary for surviving is taken away from you, what would really matter then? Most likely not how many likes your latest Instagram pictures received. So, we should all put our phones away for once and spend more quality time with our parents or siblings. Maybe go golfing with them. Or maybe go for a swim. Ah! I drown? It doesn't have to be your literal family, also your best friends or whoever is important to you counts just as well of course. Appreciate them, spend quality time with them and don't take them for granted because these people are the most important thing in the world. And I believe a lot of us would have done the same thing if we were Joel. Number 2. Polarity Another topic that The Last of Us demonstrates is that life consists of a lot of good and beautiful but also just as much bad and horrible moments. Joel and Ellie are confronted with a lot of horror, tragedy and pain, like this, 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 this and that. However, there are also a lot of hopeful, positive moments, like the magnificent scenery that makes us appreciate the beauty of nature, the flashback scenes where their relationship is on its peak, or finding friends in the dark and brutal world, like Sam and Henry. Something as beautiful as a father rescuing his daughter also means something as horrible as the death of another's daughter's father. After 20 years of depression, hopelessness and brutality, he finally found something that gives him meaning and joy. Just like Joel says himself. No matter what, you keep finding something to fight for. As we already know, Joel had to live through one of the worst moments that could possibly happen to a human being, losing his own child. And there are also other things like parting ways with his last remaining family member Tommy, the overall collapse of infrastructure, etc. In order to not get hurt like this again, Joel doesn't let anyone close to him. He has his guard up all the time so to speak. One of the most emotional scenes in the game demonstrates this exceptionally well. After tragically losing their two new friends Henry and Sam, Joel's fear of losing Ellie grows so big that he tries to get rid of her and make Tommy and his people bring her to the Fireflies in spite of how much he already cares for her. Now you'll be doing even better with Tommy! You're not my daughter and I sure as hell ain't your dad. Immediately afterwards it is shown that Joel regrets what he has said to her as well as how much Ellie is hurt by his words. Joel realized what he has done and the two of them continued their journey and since then Joel fully opened up to her and never pushed her away emotionally ever since. So in order to be happy and experience joy we have to expose ourselves to the possibility of insufferable pain. Without pain there can't be happiness, without darkness there can't be light and so on. Just think of how much happiness a child creates but also how much the parents worry when it is sick for example. So no matter through how much struggle and pain you're going right now, there's always the chance that the next day might be the best day of your entire life. Number 3. The monster. We have talked a lot about Joel's emotional life and it might come off as him being a soft man. However, the exact opposite is the case. When necessary, he's a literal killing machine and capable of horrible things. Here we also see the polarity again. Joel has a very soft and caring side but he also has a monster inside of him. The look he gives the doctor who wants to operate Ellie in the end. Holy shit. Additionally, he's also very skilled and competent regarding everything that is necessary and important in the post-apocalyptic world, like weaponry, crafting, etc. When Joel is severely injured and falls unconscious, Ellie's reaction says everything. You gotta tell me what to do. These days you often hear something like It's okay to be weak. But I think it really is not. We need both physical strength as well as emotional strength by for example staying calm during moments that make us extremely nervous or scared. Joel fulfills all of these requirements. He's a big beefy man who knows how to fight slash defend himself in Ellie and also doesn't freak out when being in danger because of other people or the zombies. Like Professor Peterson suggests You should be a monster and then you should learn how to control it. Just imagine a school shooting or something more common like a group of teenagers bullying a helpless kid. Do you think people would look at a typical soy boy who says men should be weak or would they turn to someone like Joel? Of course, these days we almost never face any life threatening events but we still should always be prepared. Rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in war. Number 4. Truth the best moment in my opinion and arguably the best ending of any video game ever is when Joel lies to Ellie about what happened in the hospital and even swears it. 
In the sequel we learn that Ellie believed him and for a few years they lived together happily as father and daughter in Tommy's village called Jackson. Their relationship is on its peak there, however the older Ellie gets, the more suspicious she grows. Therefore she asks him a few times about what really happened, to which Joel still only lies. There was no cure. Eventually she visits the hospital and finds out that Joel definitely didn't tell the truth. After saying, If you lie to me one more time, you will never see me again. To him he finally reveals what really happened, to which Ellie's reaction is, Oh my god. We don't know what exactly happened during the next few years, but it is implied that Joel is dead to her and she hasn't talked to him ever since. By lying, Joel destroyed the only thing that really mattered to him, his relationship with Ellie. Ironically, the first few years he actually got what he wanted. The bond was stronger than ever. However, it was just temporary and a matter of time for her to find out. The first game didn't really need a sequel since it remained open whether Ellie believed him or not. Maybe if he had told her the truth back then, she would have not reacted this heavily. She might have been angry at first, but maybe she would have realized what his reasons were and would have forgiven him. Or maybe she could tell that Joel lies, but she wants to be at his side as well, so she just pretends that she believes him. Nevertheless, in the second game there is a scene in which Ellie is being insulted and Joel immediately stands up for Ellie despite her still hating him. The only reaction he receives from her is What is wrong with you? I don't need your fucking help, Joel. Ellie's face afterwards suggests that she actually regrets her behavior and also seems ashamed. As a consequence, she actually visits him the first time after finding out the truth and starts a conversation with him. We see Joel's happiness immediately. First they talk about the incident where she was being insulted. Then she addresses the elephant in the room and tells him again how mad she is at him for what he did at the hospital. You're such an asshole. Joel then straightens up and replies, If somehow the Lord gave me a second chance at that moment, I would do it all over again. To which Ellie's reaction is, I don't think I can ever forgive you for that. But I would like to try. So by communicating honestly and directly, he was able to make Ellie see what his real intentions were, so she tells him that she wants to forgive him. The ice is broken now. As Jordan Peterson says, the most important rule one could follow to improve one's life is Tell the truth or at least don't lie. Here we see that lying destroyed the thing that was the most precious to him. However, the truth then was able to create their connection back again. So, as hard as it might be, we should try to never lie because the outcome will basically always be better. It often seems very tempting to lie, but you will only postpone your problems and not solve them and as a consequence your problems will grow worse and worse. In addition to that, you will become a reliable and trustworthy person in the eyes of others. However, this rule also means being honest to yourself. Whatever you want to do in life, by always answering honestly to your questions, no matter how much the answers will hurt, you will receive the best possible outcome. Maybe you take on a career path only because of pressure from your parents. By being honest to yourself and saying, no, I really don't want to do this, you most likely will face a very uncomfortable situation with your parents. However, the consequences of lying to yourself and for example quitting after a few years in or even doing it for the rest of your life are much worse. As we have said earlier, life can and will be brutal, so no one is safe from it. But by being an honest person, we will minimize the pain and suffering. Thank you so much for watching this video.